Hi, here's a quick demo of workflows in OneUptime. Workflows let you integrate OneUptime with any software system you have out there. It could be anything from Jira uh, to New Relic, Datadog, PageDuty, Slack, Teams. Could be anything really. Uh, we support open protocols like API and webhooks. Uh, so any system that understands these protocols, we should be able to integrate with them like, fairly, fairly quickly. Before I get started and show you how workflows work, I can, uh, I have created a project for you. Uh, so this is a demo project as you can see. In this demo project, I've created a monitor to make things simple. Uh, it's of type manual. It doesn't monitor anything. It's a static monitor. Uh, it just makes the demo a lot simple. Uh, for us so I click on so I click on more click on workflows and as you can see I have no workflows defined so I I do like you know, for this demo um, we could build a workflow where we could say when an incident is created send a message to slack for example uh, you could you could build this workflow fairly fairly quickly and I'll show you how so I click on create a workflow. I say send message to Slack. Description is exactly the same thing. It's currently enabled. Labels, I it's an empty list. There's no labels defined in this project. So I click on next, create workflow. Uh, when I click on view workflow, I go to builder. Uh, and here I see a canvas. And Canvas will let me define anything I like by just dragging and dropping com like the components and connecting it together. So I could say things like when an incident is created, so I'll create incident. Uh, I want to send a message to Slack. Um, so I can say send a message to Slack. And when I do that, I can connect both of these things together um and when i click on the slack component i have to paste in the webhook which i which i get from slack so if, if you go to slack uh directory i have created this temporary app or i've created this like a you know, custom app that like that gives me features of incoming webhooks so i click on incoming webhooks i've, I've created a new webhook here i copy this webhook url uh paste it in my dashboard and I can say test um, incident created. I hit save, and when I do that, I can actually go ahead and create an incident and see if this if this workflow triggers. Click on incident tab, create a new incident. Test incident. Incident is major. Click next. Monitor is home page. It's currently offline. We ignore all of these settings so incident is currently active now when I go to my webhooks I go to runs and logs and I see this this workflow executed and if I click on view logs you can actually see the logs of the whole thing being executed so you could say you could see this is the incident ID that was and this was the component that was triggered triggered this was the id that was returned uh, after the component was triggered and we sent this message to slack the question now is how do we send details of the incident to slack how do we send the incident title incident description whole bunch of that stuff so let me actually edit this workflow just a bit and show you how that works so if i click on close i click on workflow click on view workflow, click on builder, click on test incident. Now by default, this component will only return the incident ID in the success, uh, in the success port. So when this component finishes executing, it'll only return me the incident ID. I, I need to ask this component to return me more things and I could do that here. So when I click on this, it'll say select fields, which fields do you need to select by default it only selects id for me and i could see in the documentation what fields do incidents have so if i go to 
if I go to whatuptime.com, I could go to API documentation, click on incidents. Uh, it's right here, and I could literally see like you know which field. So it has an ID, it has incident title, and it has a description. So let me select these two fields uh, in my workflow. So I could say title, true. And description true. So I select both of these fields, and when I click on save, I have these two fields selected. But you know, we need to update our message that we sent to Slack. So when I click on this, I can say incident created title is I select. I select the data from other component, and I select the data from it incident on create component, which is the previous component uh, in this. Click on this, create, and it'll return me the whole JSON object here. It says model, which, which, which will return me the whole JSON object. I need to select just title field. And I can say description. I can copy the whole thing and just edit this to description. And when I do that, hit save, it should send me, it should actually send me the complete message. So I click on incident again, I create a new incident. I say test incident. Again, I say description to incident CVRT is minor, hit next, monitors affected as homepage, click on offline. Um, I don't select the on-call policy, click on next, click create, and when I do that, I go to workflows, click on runs and logs again, and see why did this actually fail. So if I click on view logs, show me there's something, this component did not execute successfully, and it returned a promise for some reason. Uh, let's see what's wrong with this component. So if I click on workflow, copy to workflow builder, Click on this. Oh, I see what the issue is. I think I've added this extra thing that was not required. Uh, let me hit save again. Try running this workflow again. Uh, so let's see. Test it. Test three. Hopefully this time it succeeds. Description three. It's major. Hit next. Monitors affected is home page. It's offline. Hit next. Create incident. Click on workflow again, click on runs and logs, and it's a success. And if I click on view logs, it'll show me exactly what was being sent. So it says test three and description three was being sent to Slack. Uh, this is a simple workflow that I've created in under a few minutes. Uh, workflows can do a whole loads of other things. You can define secrets here if you like. Uh, you could say a new variable mark it as secret and we will encrypt that in the database so that you could define secrets here in API keys here and all of that stuff you could do a whole bunch more you could you could listen to a webhook event so instead of listen listening to on create incident you could listen to a webhook event and you could say if something pings one up time uh, create an incident or something as such create or create a monitor or create uh, status page or create anything really so anything I can do on the dashboard can be done via the API so we have an API documentation for that uh, you could literally create workflows and run workflows via the API as well and anything you can do via the API can be done via workflows so I could say when this web event is received create an incident create one incident and I could scroll all the way down say add this component and connect it together and if i click on this webhook event i i have this url of the of the of the webhook it is localhost because i'm a i'm on a test server on production they should say oneuptime.com uh, and you can read things off of body you can read things off of header you can read things off of anything from this webhook uh, and create one incident so you could make a title make a description from the body of the webhook. Uh, we have a whole bunch of other components as well. Uh, we 
do loads of other things as well so we could like you know ping api any external api you like uh we could send an api request you could do if else so you could branch stuff you could say if insert and title doesn't have this value ignore it otherwise do something uh you could do javascript you could run custom javascript and return things as well so that is also possible and you can do a whole bunch of other things you can do json manipulation you can do emails you can do a whole whole load of other things uh, you could also run this workflow on a schedule so if i click on trigger i have this thing called schedule so you could run this workflow every minute every five minutes you can run it manually or you can run it at an event that happens in one of time so anything current events like you know create read delete update events that happen on one up time you should be able to like you know add a webhook trigger for that um, so it's very versatile it's very customizable um, if you need help creating workflows like you know our team is more than happy to help you out um, thank you so much for, for your time and thank you so much for listening